Um, so thank you everybody, thank you for coming. Um, this, is, this is a cool opportunity for me. Um, this is part of, was part of my dissertation, but it's gaining a little bit of momentum here and uh, we're trying to expand to different uh, uh, states and trying to, I don't know, add a little bit to it, okay? So it's a, it's a project that is, I think, very interesting um, and it's growing. So, and I know uh, some people around <laughs> Julia, for example, are going to help us out with, with uh, one of the states and uh, other master students in the past already have done that uh, with uh, Lucas and Anna. They helped us out with Ceará. So you see a little bit of like, the results that they have that I brought in and things that we're going to do. And then uh, hopefully get some input from you all uh, about how to improve this, how to make this a little bit like more sound and make the comparison work. Okay, because like this is the next step, right? To make a comparison across states. So um, the idea here is trying to understand whether um, managerial practices uh, influence the student achievement or, or learning, right? Uh, student performance. And we we want to do this in a, a little bit of a different way than, than it has been done in the literature so far. The literature looks a lot at schools, and we are going like a, a step up, and we are looking at the state level and trying to understand managerial practices at the state level uh, and how that influences the student achievement. I'll explain a little bit why this is, I think, more interesting than looking at schools. So first, uh, just to understand what we're talking about when we're talking about managerial practices, there are two, the literature shows very, like two big groups. Uh, the more comparable, tangible aspects of uh, 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 managerial practices that involves uh, operation, monitoring, targeting, incentives, and something that some, some uh, a group of, of practices that are a little bit more subjective, okay? So uh, innovation, how do you measure innovation and compare innovation across like managerial practices to improve innovation? So we are not looking at these subjective ones. We're looking more at the uh, comparable, practical uh, uh, managerial practices. So when we're talking about practices here, think about something that it's easier to compare. So do you do this kind of things or you don't? Uh, there's a lot of debate here that we can we can we can definitely talk about it. Uh, to under, like maybe this is not the best practice that should be done at schools. Uh, literature shows that it works. Okay, so like those are the kind of things that works in order to drive results. So we're trying to see if that works for the the, the, the scenario of education too. And and so. There has been a lot of studies looking at managerial practices in, in, in different contexts. So in, in the private sector, for sure. Um, so there is a positive association between productivity and survival rates in different settings, survival rates by firms, right? Um, that stemmed out uh, some, some um, literature looking at how man does managerial practices work in, in governments or in the public sector. And some look, uh, uh, and some analysis looking at how managerial practices work within the school context. So looking mainly at what uh, principals uh, do within the schools to actually drive the results and uh, organize the school and work with the teachers. So in, in my opinion, this is very limited um, and because there's a lot of variation across schools. Right? So the idea here is to use the decentralized organization of the system in Brazil to look at something that is a little bit more comparable. I'll get into that in a second. Um, but looking at schools, uh, Bloom and all, they, they have looked at uh, eight different countries. And this is, these are the average score, uh, the managerial practice score using the world management survey for each country within schools. Okay, so this is, school score, average school score for each one of these countries. The, 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 the world management survey varies between five, one and five. So higher, meaning more use of uh, these managerial practices that are seen as effective. Um, and so the closer to one, you don't use that enough. And I think kind of expected to have a kind of a low result here, so we are around like, the top one is the UK with the average school 2.93, right? So 
and and, and India is in last place in Brazil uh, with two. Just to be a little bit like, just to understand what this means, um, the UK, about 45% of the schools in the UK use targets, uh, 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 um, goals and monitoring in their daily practices as uh, 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 to, to track results and, and to achieve results as a manager of practice that is actually being used, so 45%. If you go to India, this is about 5% of the schools that are using these kind of practices within schools. So the, 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 it's a striking difference in terms of uh, what is actually being done within those schools. Okay, so the, 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 the range is kind of short here, but, but it's, it's a striking difference between what's being done. But again, um, there's a lot of variation across uh, uh, countries, across schools, in terms of what actually is being conducted. So it's really hard to, to connect this to, to, to test scores differences across schools and across countries here. Um, so we are looking, we're going to do a deep dive in Brazil and try to use that leverage Brazil uh, to understand a little bit more and connect managerial practice to, to um, student test scores. Oh, and just a little bit more about this. Like they actually do that. They try to uh, uh, use these scores to predict the variation in, in death scores within, this, uh, within each of these countries. And they, they pick up like about 40% of variation can be explained by these scores. So be, between these schools in, the, uh, in each of these countries, which is pretty interesting, it's pretty interesting. All right. Very fast, very fast. Any questions so far? Yes. Yeah, so just thinking about the sort of managerial roles here and compared to like business and the private sector, it seems like there's a fundamental difference between a company that sells computers, shoes, whatever, and schools, because when you're in the private sector, you're, you have an audience you're designing for. We make the best laptop, the customers who want to come to us, but in schools, obviously, you take whoever comes and you have to meet their needs, whatever they are. So do you feel like that difference between, you know, private sector, more like commercial middle management is extremely different than schools or do you feel like it's all kind of the same thing? So I, I totally agree. Uh, what's your name? Jeremy. Jeremy, thank you. Uh, I totally agree. And I think that's why doing what I'm doing, actually doing it's better because we kind of run away from that. So. Uh, I'm, I'm shifting from the schools to the system management and running the system. It's a little bit closer to what the, 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 the uh, private sector is doing because you have to make, make things like you have to have supplies coming to the schools and you have to actually understand, oh, these schools are progressing, these are not progressing. So the, 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 um, the higher level of this uh, the structure of the system works in a more similar way. And I think that's why I think... Uh, 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 it's expected to see like a lower result in, 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 the, in the scores here within schools because schools are doing something different than, than producing laptops, you know? But, but from the perspective of, of the system, uh, while understanding whether the system is working, it's kind of the same, regardless if you're in the public sector doing like working with schools or producing laptops. Does, does that, yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Cool. I have a question yep. about this specific data. Do you know if it was self-reported? Is this oh, no, 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 no. This is a, a bunch of interviews that um, the, the team did, a bunch of phone interviews the team did with, with the schools for all these countries. So um, they had a huge team uh, and they, they were in the UK calling different time zones across. The, the, it's crazy what they did, but then they, they had a, a really good, like big, big sample within each country. Um, I can't say it's like a representative sample because there are some biases going on here, but uh, um, but they did try to connect to schools and understand what's going on and get a good sample of each one of these countries. So uh, a big, a big number of them, but phone interviews. And just one reminder, if you're asking a question inside the room, please speak as, as loudly as you can because it, it, it is a little hard to hear the questions uh, um, for those who are online. So thank you. Am I being loud enough? You, everybody says you're being loud enough. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? All right. So okay. So I have an idea what's going on. One one quick thing. Also, just for those online, if you had, do have a question, 
uh, David uh, Plank and I are monitoring so we can communicate to that to him so that he can call on you appropriately. So just raise your hand or you know otherwise send a note in the chat that you have a question and we can you know, make sure that we get a chance to, to answer to ask that. I have a quick question. Sure. Uh, are those all public schools or is it a mixture? Of the mixture. mixture. And, 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 not, and uh, different different setups of schools in terms of uh, what what uh, education levels they offer. Very good. Thanks for that. We good? Cool. All right. So I keep saying like Brazil, Brazil is interesting. So let's let me try to explain why I think Brazil is an interesting case study for this, and and um and how can we take advantage of that? So Brazil is a huge federalist country. We have twenty seven states, considering the the, the federal district, and more than five thousand municipalities, right? So this means for, I, I, I think everybody here understands that, maybe not Jeremy, um, but the state and the municipalities, they have their own educational systems, right? So each one of the state has their own educational system and each one of the municipalities have their own educational systems. So we effectively have more than 5,000 public educational systems running the country, right? And state, the states are, very big. So they have to organize themselves into, mo I think, I can't say this 100% certain, but I, I think every single state of the country has, is divided into regional offices to provide public education. Okay. So that means that across the state, the educational policy is the same for all state schools within that state. But the, 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 the way these policies policies get to the schools, they are they they go through regional offices of education. So what I'm going to look at here is whether the managerial practices that is, are being conducted within these regional offices that are implementing the same policies across the state uh, influence student achievement. Yes. You're talking about the same policies for the state schools. For the state schools, and that's a good point, and I'll show you some differences there, and I, and I think that's why it's interesting to do this in a comparative way, okay? Because there are differences in terms of uh, enrollment, the relationship between state and municipalities, there's a lot going on there. So I think we can take advantage of that and, and, and get more information out of it, exactly because we have this range. But, but the, the main, the bread and butter here is Looking at states, state uh, policies, so what? Actually, state the state system, and looking at managerial practices conducted within each regional office that is implementing the state policies. They are the same across the board within each state. So it's a little bit harder to compare across states because of that, because then I lose we lose the advantage that we actually have. But but and that's that's part of what I want to discuss here, and I want to get your opinion is that how can we do that, and how can we uh, use the, 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 the variation. Um, so what I'm going to be looking at here and looking at the, the major, major practices here is uh, within, I'm focusing on the state of Sao Paulo because that's that's what I've done for my my, uh, my dissertation, but I, I'm bringing a little bit of a, a sneak peek for Ceará and, and Pernambuco. Um, and hopefully later in the year, We'll be able to show minutes, but I'll show a little bit more about that. Okay, so does that make sense? All right, so just a little bit of, I'll go really fast about this, because I think all of us kind of understand that. But um, just a little bit of the structure. Uh, I'll be looking at like everything that we've done so far is looking at elementary and middle school, so first to ninth grades. Um, and then we have, Anyway, sorry. Um, the enrollment here is kind of shared in like overall in the country, shared in, in, in uh, middle school between state and municipalities. And the, the vast majority of first to fifth grades uh, is being offered by the municipalities. Okay. But this varies a lot by state. So, so, so far we've done that for Ceará, Pernambuco, in Sao Paulo and Minas is on deck. We have the data from Minas, 
So we need to organize, organize the data. And uh, Gab Gabrielle is going to help out, help us out with that. And then Julia is going to uh, help us with the interviews and we're going to make that uh, move forward. Um, the strategy was a little bit different across these states. So Pernambuco, we actually interviewed all uh, regional offices in the state. Uh, Ceará, we didn't. Ceará, we did like a, a, a sample and Sao Paulo too. So Minas, we'll probably do a sample because they did a bit. So, so just so we, we get to what you were saying, Anna, the differences across states, it's very important to understand here and, and, and then how we can use that to, to get more information. So Ceará, we have only 20 uh, regional offices and the enrollment uh, in, in elementary for the state schools is only 1.6%. So, and I think this is part of the problems that we already have with, with Ceará. We have been having the Ceará. We'll see the results in a bit. Um, in Minas, we have 47 regional offices and about almost 50% of the enrollment in elementary. So we'll hear first to ninth grade. If we break this up, it's going to be a little bit different. If we break into first years and final years, uh, but overall, it's about 50%. Pernambuco is closer to what Ceará is, right? So about 15% of enrollment and 16 regional offices. All of them were interviewed already. And Sao Paulo is huge just because of the sheer number of uh, students and, and schools within the state. So 91 regional offices uh, and 46% of the enrollment in elementary is state. So... Um, what I think is interesting here, that, and, and uh, I'm, I'll try to use that, is Ceará and Pernambuco are closer together in terms of uh, organization and like how they, what they look like. Uh, and Minas and Sao Paulo are closer together in what they look like. But they are very different in terms of Minas and Sao Paulo, for example, in terms of cooperation between state and municipality. Right? Uh, Ceará is basically all the enrollment is done by the municipalities uh, for, for, for this level. Pernambuco, almost that. And, but, but the integration between state and municipality in Ceará seems to be a lot tighter than, than, than in Pernambuco, but Pernambuco has, they have implemented some, some uh, policies that actually focused on managerial practices, which is very interesting. And we, I think we're kind of picking this up already. So these are the four states that we'll be looking at. Um, I'll focus everything now, from now on in Sao Paulo, but then later I'll show you the results for Ceará and Pernambuco as we have so far. And then we can talk more. Oh, any questions? Yes. Why did you choose to look at the elementary level and not high school, for example? Uh -huh. uh, I want to use my, my goal with Sao Paulo that worked really well. Uh, there are the states we haven't done that yet, but I want to use the municipalities as kind of a control. So okay. the idea is the state structure influences directly the state schools but not as much the municipal schools. Okay. So if I did, if I use the enrollment in high school, I couldn't use the municipalities as a, this kind of control. Uh, for the state of Sao Paulo, I was using that. So Ceará I can't do that <laughs> at all. Uh, and Pernambuco is going to be very hard too, because this 15% of the schools, of the, this enrollment is going to be probably in the CF. Uh, I need to look more into that. So it's going to be very biased, but, um, the idea was that, right? The idea was using the municipalities as almost like a, a, uh, um, a contrafactual here, trying to get as close to, to this intent, like to be able to show that the, the estimates that I'm getting for, for value added, and I'll get a little bit more into that in a second, for the regional offices are actually coming, uh, are actually related to, to, to uh, achievement of students because they're not affecting the students in, in municipal schools. I have a question as well. Uh, so are you assuming that uh, policies are managed different, differently at different levels? Like high school policies are managed different than, because if you're looking at like the practices specifically, you could assume that the, the results, I mean, if you look at independently, if they're getting results in high schools or they're getting results in uh, like elementary schools. Let me see. Let me see if I, if I understand what you're saying. Um, you 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 think that it wouldn't be a problem for me to use high school compare to, high school to, to elementary. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm. I think so because 
I mean, the, what you're looking at is actually if the practices are influencing the outcomes. So, but then if the policies are very different, how can I, can I, what, how can I say what, that the, the, the difference is coming from the managerial practices and not the policies that are being implemented? Mm-hmm. You know, so they can have better policies being implemented for high schools than for municipal for for, for uh, elementary schools, and then and then by comparing the managerial practices there, I'm actually picking up differences in, in, in policies too, and that kind of defeats the purpose of, of what I'm trying. To do. But doesn't the same apply because policies are different between well, municipalities, and I, and I understand what you're saying that they are similar. They're like more similar because they're both elementary school practice policies. But they are essentially different. Yes. So the the two two different two, two different things. Here. Um, first is looking at the actual estimates that I'm going to analyze and, and, and compare across uh, within the state is between the regional offices of the state and looking at state schools. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at municipal schools here as so like a sanity check, mm-hmm. just to see like look okay is this. Does this make sense? Am I am I picking up the same kind of influence of the, the, the regional office for the, the municipal schools? If if I'm picking that up, the same the same thing, kind of my 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 estimate is going to be related to something that is related to the region that they are in, and not necessarily from come, something that is coming from the the, 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 the structure or what what is done within the structure of the states. So I'm not really comparing. The results of the of municipal and the state. I'm just looking at whether I'm um, I'm picking up the same kind of influence between municipal and state schools. Now, within looking only at the state system, the state system, I am comparing the regional offices within the state system, and they have the same policies. So what I'm what I'm saying is, I it wouldn't make a lot of sense for me to compare uh, results in high school between. Uh, um, between state and municipal, because the municipal is going to be low enrollment, very different. It's very, it's going to be closer to a, a situation uh, to, to what CRI is going on, uh, or what's going on in CRI for, for, for elementary. So, th- does that is, does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does make sense. Uh, what I'm uh, I'm just asking this because, for instance, in Minas uh I mean, probably the last time you had like a, an elementary school policy, pedagogical policy was back when you were there. Uh-huh. And uh, so there's like, but I don't know, eight years, seven years that there's no specific policy for elementary schools in Indonesia. So I, I'm just worried. Like, but, but we still have uh, 48% yeah. of enrollment. Yeah, this is what this is what I'm saying. If, if you're not getting catching that specific element, like maybe the manager practices are not that great because there's not enough focus on elementary schools. But that's just like a, a, a reflection. It's not, I, I perfectly understand what you're saying. Sure, sure. Yeah. Th- that's a good point. But I, um, because for instance, for Seattle, is the same. If they have like 1.6%, they like, they basically like don't care about that's elementary schools say. as much as municipalities do. You, you, you're, you're right. And, and, but that's not what they say, right? In Seattle, for example, they, okay. they, they have uh, a structure within the state system that actually works very directly leverage with, with the municipal systems. And that, that's how it should be, according to our constitution. Mm-hmm. But, uh, um, <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I, I get your point. And I think, I think um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to like, organize my- yeah, we, can, we can move on. No, no, we can no, discuss no, this later. Okay, if you want to <laughs> I don't want to be interrupted. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It's, it's a good point. It's just, um, I'm not sure how much I would be adding, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that the the, the um, focusing here on one of them, and then and one that I can try to compare if if that's the case, just just for the sanity check, I think it makes it makes more sense. Um, I could try to do that only for uh, for for high schools, only looking at the state in all states and seeing um, what can be done there, but. But I, I think I would lose a lot by not looking at the start of that state in check. I won't be able to do that to do that in all states, as you can see. But but at least in one of them, I can. So so far, uh, Minas will be able to do that hopefully. All right, and I, and I understand that like even though they they are not creating policies, they are implementing something. They are the schools are running right. So 
the, the idea is when the, 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 they are making these schools run in a different way, you know, regardless of having a specific policy for that or not. As long as it's the same across the board. <laughs> right, any more questions, comments, concerns? All right, so this was everything up to here was kind of an introduction. Uh, <laughs> so the question here is, to what extent and how do mid-level management practices and regional departments of education uh, relate to gains in student achievement resilience states? Okay. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is first estimate a value added for the regional offices. So meaning here that how much are they contributing to student gains over time? Uh, Based on this value added, I want to rank the regional offices and see if I can uh, identify the offices that are consistently top performing and consistently by bottom performers. And, and then pick a sample within these and interview them and trying to understand what they are doing in terms of managerial practices. Okay. Um, so these are the three steps of, of the, the of this this research. Does that make sense? Yep. Are you looking also at student demographics, like uh, income? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, so I'll get there. Give me give me one second, I'll almost I'll be there in a second. Any more questions? All right, so we have to broader steps here. First, a quantitative and then a qualitative step, okay? Uh, the quantitative is looking at student level uh, data and longitudinal data. So I have <laughs> the same student across time and I can, in, in the case of Sao Paulo, for example, I can see the same student in the fifth, seventh, and ninth grades uh, for four different cohorts of students in Sao Paulo. In, in Ceará, we were able to do that for three cohorts. In Pernambuco, we are going to, uh, I'm working with four cohorts. And Minas, I think we will be able to get like about seven, something like that. It's just crazy. Minas data is a lot richer. Um, so I'm looking at the students over time, like how, what, what's the, the gain over time? And I'm trying to understand how much of this gain is coming from the state, like it's being contributed by the regional state uh, offices, regional offices. Okay. Um, and then Using this, I'm identifying their high and low, using this estimates, and then doing the qualitative. So the qualitative is doing a purpose, a purposeful sampling method. So I'm getting, I'm deliberately looking at the, the top and bottom ends of this because I want, I want to be this, like, I want to emphasize the difference, okay? Um, and they strict, so I'm using structured, like semi-structured interviews uh, with, with, with uh, the, the leadership of the regional offices. And, and then using this, I'm scoring them using the role management survey that I'll explain a little bit more about it is in a second. And also using the, the interviews as input. I'm like using the qualitative data from this as an input for the, the results that I'm going to show today. Okay, so two stages, qualitative, quantitative first to inform the qualitative and the qualitative is actually giving the differences that we're looking at. All right, so uh, getting to your question. So to estimate the value added of, of the regional offices, I'm using a lot of information that is related not only to the students, but to the students, to the families, to the schools, to the municipalities, okay? So just, just understand a little bit what I mean here is, I'm, uh, for example, I'm using student previous test scores to control for what is going to be their later stage test scores that, and then getting the gains. Or family, I'm looking at mothers, uh, 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 education, father's education in terms of like educational level, uh, items at home to estimate an SES uh, measurement, um, and using that to control uh, in, in my model. I'm also looking at schools, so um, information about the teachers, so like what percentage of the curriculum they offer uh, during the school year, for example, they answer that in the in surveys. If, like, how long have they been teaching? How long have they been teaching at a specific school? The connection between what they are, uh, 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 their, their actual uh, degree is on and what they're actually teaching. 
I'm using all that in this school level uh, information here. And the municipality just to control a little bit about like if the municipality is too rich and, and uh, uh, just to have a little bit more uh, regional control there. A little more time there. Um, at the school level, it's a little bit, it's, I think the worst thing that I have in here because I can't link a student to a teacher. So I'm, I can link a student to a school. So everything that I have here is our averages, like school averages, uh, but school averages for a specific subject. So I have Portuguese and math. So I get all, all teachers, math teachers from that school that teach at that level. And I can link, I can bundle that up and have an average for the school. Um, but unfortunately, I can't connect students to teachers. That would be great, but I can't. <laughs> um, does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Any more questions about this? Oh, so I have all these controls, and I have one thing that is the value added, the, 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 the uh, regional office fixed effects. So this is actually what I'm, uh, I'm calling the, as the value added for, by the regional office. I'm getting the, the, this fixed effect and ranking this fixed effect to get the top and uh, bottom performers. Just to make sure if I understand it, you added all these variables and made it into one variable called regional fixed effect. No, 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 no. There's a bunch of variables there. Oh, yeah. they all look separately. I'm sorry? They all look uh, independently or not. Did you manage to turn that into one? What, what do you mean by that? I mean, you have students, families, school, municipalities data. Uh -huh. Did you make that into one? No, no, no. It's it's a it's it's a it's a big model. It's a okay. bunch of um, of data there. And I have too many students, so it doesn't it doesn't. Yeah. Sort of a problem. Okay. <laughs> it's like three billion students. You could take. Okay. Any more questions? And I think it's interesting, like. And, and, and um, so, what I think it's, it, it brings a little bit more, uh, 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 makes me a little bit more secure, uh, safe, like, I don't know, uh, safety about this is like we have a lot of students that share the regional offices. So, the estimates for the regional offices are here, it's supposed to be really good. Um, and we have, therefore, different cohorts over time. So, it's like I, I'm very confident of. of, of of the model because of that. But at the same time, it's relying too much on it. So I don't know that Eric, if, if you have any, any. Uh... I'll let Eric comment, but we also have a question from cool. someone online, awesome. which is, you is I, the I substitute, is that, is that a student? So you use yeah. individual data. Yeah. I don't know that I have a comment. <laughs> no, 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 so, uh, so my, my question is just like, um, how, if if you have any idea or, or if you from what I've said, you do you how confident do you think we can be in the estimates for the regional like for the as this is a good estimate of the value added? I mean, it's about the best we're going to do. I mean, the hardest part is what 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 could give rise to it, right? And you know, in some sense, like if you think about any good value added, what we're trying to do is somehow you know control for what the baseline is. And to measure progress from there that we expect. Now, the, the 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 hardest part here is like the regional fixed effects. You're assuming kind of a, a constant value added or an average value added across yeah. all students and sectors, right? You could make this more nuanced if you wanted it and create kind of regional effects on you know primary, secondary school sure. and, and do some things to try to get at some of the heterogeneity that might be there. Because it could be that the value added is different for different um, you know kind of sectors. Sure. But yeah, in terms of value added specifications, you know, this is about what people do. I mean, <laughs> okay. okay. You know, oftentimes if they have like a free test score, they can try to do some something else that kind of you know allows more kind of a Bayesian approach. But sure. you know, this is about what happens. Okay. And I, I'm just because I, I always feel kind of some some like, I don't know that that I can have a lot of pushback on this and 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 um, trying to like, I keep thinking about whether. We can strengthen this in a different way, you know. Cool. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm trying to formulate my question. Sure. Uh, but do you have any analysis uh, of different governments? Like, because from my understanding, from what I understand here, it's just 
all the cohorts being analyzed all together with mm. these regional fixed effects. And, and then if you do that, you're analyzing more the bureaucracy level of uh, strategies and what they acquired during all these years, more than the leadership itself. So mm -hmm. like, did you, from my understanding, I don't know mm -hmm. if that's, that's right, but do you have also an, an, an analysis of different uh, governments and different leaderships too? I think that's a great point. And I think there's more, we can even go further than that is getting more information about the regional office itself mm -hmm. in terms of like the, the team composition there and, and more information about that i i, I don't edit here but considering sao paulo the interviews that i've like made like people were the regional offices like, the head of the regional office for 10 15 years okay. so i'm kind of like uh, uh safer okay. in, in that okay. sense um or or whether like some of them i, I interviewed they were just beginning mm -hmm. but but they were replacing someone that were there for 10 to 15 oh, okay. years oh. so in, in the process i was trying to get them to talk about what was happening and this is part of the the, the protocol too it's like I, we don't want to know what you're thinking about we want to know what would actually happen mm -hmm. yes Eric. ricardo Pini has a question oh, cool. um from online ricardo Unmute yourself. Oh yeah, uh, yes. Hi, Felipe. Nice to see you. Uh, so, uh, how the the time enters in your model? You said that you have a longitudinal data, right? So, I know so you have a previous achievement, but you have like more than one time point for, for achievement, right? Or no? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have three. It, it depends on the state. So, uh -huh. uh, um, so it's just pre three. pre achievement, just and it's not like yeah. a growth, like a slope of the growth or something. Exactly. Like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I was just curious. I, I, I keep thinking about your question on like, is this kind of regional fixed effects like too much of a stretch and kind of what are the potential? I'm just curious about whether you actually looked at kind of variance within the municipal, like, because if I'm understanding what like, the regional kind of offices and the municipalities are falling under it, and the regional offices are like the state is above the regional office, exactly. right? So you actually can have within the same regional office like a municipality. Yes. And I'm also wondering if there are like kind of are there outliers? Or, like are there like is there a big polarization within, say, that you have like ultimately a regional fix effect that's being pulled up because you have a municipality, <laughs> one specific mm -hmm. municipality that is super high achieving, and it's ultimately bringing in the entire um region up um I this is not me critiquing it's more like if no. you were like because you were like what can i do to kind of if people want to poke holes in that i guess one question i would have as well have you checked for variance within municipality store and then i guess if we go down and say variance within schools within the municipality and kind of keep so okay um level. yeah that's a good point i don't do that i so i thought about if I could add a different kind of fixed effect, like a municipal fixed effect or something like that, mm -hmm. that would interfere with my with my estimate of the regional office. office. Um, I think it's hard to, to say that there is one municipality driving this for 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 any specific uh, uh, regional office because they are big, and, and, and you would need to be a really striking uh, uh, outlier there to, to to actually. Yeah, you need to be very different from yeah. the other one. And and yeah. and as I do that by Co a different cohorts over the years, um, it's 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 even better because then I can I, I wouldn't pick up a one shot. So if, if this regional office was like one year really high and then disappeared like through other other cohorts, I'm not putting that like regional office in the interview. Okay, because it's not consistently top performer or consistently bottom performer. I'm, I'm looking for consistency. I'm trying to understand like this pattern. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, I guess. But 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 yeah. you you have a point. I'm yeah. just trying to understand the variance within. Um, I would have to think about how to do that, uh, and and keep my my value added uh, my, my original office picture right here. Yeah, because um, otherwise the whole thing gets exactly. Like, exactly. Yes, 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 yes. But 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 that's a good point. Trying to understand the variation within the original office would be interesting. Any more? Yeah, yeah. All right. So all this is to get the rankings and identify which regional offices I'm going to, oh, to interview. Oh, well, 
but the, the government thing. Uh, I was in the middle of it. Um, so yeah, so I can I can add a bunch of information about the, the, the regional offices and the staff and the crew over there uh, that would help un like clean out what the, this this regional office like fix effect would actually be measuring. That would be fantastic if I could do that. Um, I don't have enough information about that. But then one thing that I could do is whether two things that I could do and, and I could try to do. One is whether there was a change in the leadership. I think I can get that information. Um, I think it's a little bit harder than it seems. Mm -hmm. um, and something that is easier is changing the government. Right? Like if there was a change of like a party mm -hmm. or, or of government. So this is something that I can add to the model and, and, and see as a proxy for changes changes in, in the, the regional office of the leadership. This is something that I, that, that I can add. I think would uh, add some, some more explanation to this. That's for sure. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. More questions? All right. So this, this is the, the world management survey. So after I have the ranking, okay. I identify okay. high, uh, the top and bottom performers. I use the world management survey to interview the leadership. And the, 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 um, the survey is divided into eight axes, uh, targeting roles, staff involvement, staffing, monitoring, flexibility, performance incentives, and recruitment and retention. But as you can see, going back to the beginning of the conversation, this, these are things that are very standardized. Like, oh, do you, do you have a bonus that you pay for your... Well, you have a note with your pay, right? Someone needs to mute themselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so, like, for example, recruit, recruitment and retention. Like, can you actively promote people to to keep them in, within your 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 uh, team right so these are very easy to compare and very uh, standardized by managerial and practices so these are the kind of things that we're looking at okay um, what the, does the survey look like so the questions are very open-ended we don't want to lead the interviewer um, and, and uh, the interviewee, and um, we we don't show them the whole grid. We just make the question and see what happens, and try to poke them to say more, to talk more about what they actually do. So, for example, this one here: uh, How would underperformance be tolerated in the organization that you manage? Can you give me an example of uh, how such a case would be dealt with? It's very broad. The person can talk about anything, right? And what we, we did was trying to understand whether they fall into one of these five categories here, considering the practices that are being conducted there. So uh, this is kind of subjective, right? So what I did to try to avoid problems with this is for both Ceará and uh, Sao Paulo, uh, we had three people grading each one of the interviews. So scoring which one of the interviews within this. And then we tested the reliability of the scores across it, like uh, whoever was scoring uh, across the graders. And in Pernambuco, so far we have two interviewers, uh, two people uh, uh, scoring the interviews. And I'm going to jump in because there's a lot of homogeneity, homogeneity in the, the, the answers there. So I'm jumping in next and I'm doing the scoring too to see, just to double check. So we'll have three people in each one of them, and we have a reliability measure trying to understand whether people were consistent across, uh, the, the scores were consistent across interviewer, uh, across uh, score. Um, and then using, we use this results for the manager of practices scores. Or, uh, WMS scores. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, I, can, I can definitely send out the, the, the survey, uh, this survey, is a little bit different than the, the standard one that is done for the, 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 the uh, private industry. So the, the World Management Survey, the bureaucracy lab within the World Management Survey did a, a, a tweaking of this that is focused for the public sector. I got that with them and I adapted a little bit more for the education public sector in Brazil. And 
I still think there are some things that, that could be improved, but we're getting there. And I think it's, it's, it's a lot better than, than, than the initial one to what we have now. Uh, no, a lot better for what we do. Okay. Um, cool. All right. So let's have a look at the results of Sao Paulo. So this is just showing the distribution of value added of, of the 91 regional offices value added. And, and this, is, this is the municipality thing that I was talking about. So here I have the, the distribution for each one of the 91 regional offices twice for the state schools within the regional office and for the municipal schools within the regional office, the same regional office. And I just wanted to understand whether I to see if I can visually see that uh, uh, the regional office is not influence, influencing the municipal schools that much. And when I break it down by municipal and state, that's what it looks like. This, the, municipal, uh, uh, the, the influence on municipal schools, evaluated from municipal schools, are centered around zero, which is great. I was like, yes, that makes sense. That kind of it gives me a little bit more. Uh, and then it's like two groups uh, uh, that, that appear. Uh, we talking to David like, in the past about this. Like he, we were even considering like that's something wrong. Like this is this is too too great. But I I redone it gazillion times in different ways, and it's still it's still there. So I kind of yeah like okay I have to believe it now. <laughs> you know um, I tried not to believe it. You know uh, and it's so what what this is showing me is that. Um, the estimates for value added are kind of making sense. So like we are actually capturing something that is happening to state schools and it's related to this the region to the regional office. And it's not actually affecting the municipal schools. Does that make sense? Now I get four top performer, five bottom performer. Um, I didn't get five on top because one of the, the interviews. With all COVID, like uh, there's a there was a lot going on, and, and I couldn't uh, do the, the final one there. So I have four top and five bottom performers here, and so here is just looking at the axis, okay? And and the, the green one is high performance, and the red one is low performance, okay? So in São Paulo, there is a big difference between. The managerial practices that are actually conducted within low performing offices and high performing offices, which is pretty cool. Um, the like I said in the beginning, the number the numbers here don't look like a striking difference, but none of them in the literature does. So um, it's actually different. And let me explain what are the main differences here. Mainly only looking at targeting, right? Um, and flexibility are, are the main differences between high and low performing uh, regional offices, which kind of makes sense. Let me explain a little bit more why. Uh, performance incentives, recruitment orientation, uh, roles, those kind of things are very standardized because they come from the state. There is a little bit of room for, for interpretation. And when I'm talking, like when we were interviewing them and talking to the, the leadership there, you we were asking things like, oh, so what, what, how do you uh, 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 motivate your, your people within, within the regional office? Oh, they say, I, I can't pay them more. But some of them said, like, oh, no, I can, like, try to put them in a higher position within the regional office. Like, so there's a little bit of wiggle room here that they can, they can do, and some of them identify that. But that doesn't make the, the practice jump in terms of a, a, a score. But targeting and flexibility, they do. And the, uh, let me, let me, okay, okay. I'll, I'll explain what this means in a second. Uh, and here is divided by question. Okay, so what getting these results, like the, the, the score and, and from the interviews, what I could pick up was that the, the high performing regional offices, they do not depend as much on the central office as the low, like the bottom performing one uh, do depend. So for example, the targeting thing that I was talking about, uh, 
the low the high performing uh, uh, regional offices they actually say no uh, we identify the, the 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 schools that are they need more support and we give them more support we go there we go there every week and we try to understand and we monitor and we like and and, and um they understand that from the pedagogical perspective of which is, oh, no, they are struggling because of this, this, and that. So we have a pedagogical team that goes there and helps with them with this and this and that, which is pretty interesting, right? The bottom reform, like bottom reform ones, they usually say like, no, we, the, the central office tell us what schools need more support, and then we help them. It's not that they don't help them, but they keep, like, they, they're waiting for the regional office, the, the central office to tell them like, oh, where should I go? And they have the same idea. They have a team that go there, like they, they, they go there and, and they uh, uh, give them pedagogical support and things like that. But, but they are waiting on the, the central. They don't identify them like, beforehand and try to do something more active, okay? So I think that's the main difference that I could identify, you connecting the scores and the interviews, um, which I think is pretty interesting. If we look at Ceará, so sneak peek kind of, Ceará, we need to, revise things a little bit because of the 1.6% of enrollment there. But this is what Sarah looks like. So that's, the differences kind of go away, right? Um, they are at a higher uh, uh, score overall than, than, than the state of Sao Paulo, which might be telling us something there. So now, now we are venturing into a, a bunch of maybes and mites uh, because we haven't done this like, comparison and like deep dive into this yet. So that's like, I wanted to bring this up just to talk to you about it. Yeah. So in Sarah, uh, the regional offices must work directly with the municipal, right? Because that's, yeah. I mean, 1.6% of the schools and students would not justify having an office in every region. So, so is that what you, what you observe? That no, so they're, they're actually involved directly with the They, when, when we were talking to them, they were making, they were referencing practices that were related to high school. So, and, and that's the thing, and that and that's the that's the mismatch, and, and, and something that we need to think about how to deal with. So they were thinking about their own schools, how they manage their school, the schools within their system, and not their relationship with the, with the, the municipal schools, and. And we are we are in a in a weird situation here because we understand that Sarah like they have a, a really good system like our cooperation system with, with the municipality, but this didn't show up in the interviews at all, you know. Uh, uh, Lucas was was uh, uh, the main uh, Lucas and Anna right like they were doing this, but Lucas was the main defender of the of the results here, and he was like, no, because this is done by the central office. But wait. Why do you have the money? So there's, we don't, we need, we will need to think about how to do this. And, and um, we might need to redo everything and like redo the interviews and, and, and identify the regional offices again uh, because of the, like, we might, in Sierra, we might need to go to like, look only at high school. And then we would lose the comparison between with the municipalities. But we don't have the comparison anyway to begin with because mm -hmm. they don't have enrollment. So it wouldn't be a big loss. But we would need to do it all over again um, using different different data, you know. Yeah, just going back to the last slide, we're talking about the I don't, I'm not sure about this, but like the municipalities who are able to like assess problems and go and support teaching teams, with the contrast being the the other I guess municipalities waiting for central office to tell them what to do. So I'm thinking about the time frame piece of that. So. A school, a, a struggling school or struggling network of schools that receives four months of support versus a school that receives only two months of support. I'm wondering if, if you thought about sort of like that time, the time that they're getting support as part of the value, right? Like it could be that, you know, each group is doing the same thing to support a school. Because like you said, they, they go, they do the kind of similar thing. But a school getting four months of support versus a school getting two months of support, well, of course, a school with four months of support is going to be better. So I just wonder. So th that's a great point. But if if that's happening because of the practices they conduct that they they have, that's an influence of the practice, you know. So so uh, 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 it's harder for me to get that because like I don't have the information about about 
the, the re actual relationship between the, the regional office and the school and how often and I, I don't have that. But, but if that is coming from what they actually do and how they relate. So if, if what I'm trying to say is if the schools that are getting less time of support, uh, it's because they are waiting for the central office to tell them and not actively going, well, that's that's a managerial practice right there that's yeah. actually affecting you. Thank you. Is yeah. you have a question? Yes, uh, hi. hi. Uh, oh, well, first, I mean, th this this subject is very fun to me. As you know, we're, we're help, we're have this partnership with two regional offices in Sao Paulo, Sum, Sudois, and uh, we're seeing a huge difference between each one, uh, each, the, the impact that we have in, in each one of them, due largely to the quality of the director regional. So the, the impact of the director regional is, is critical on all this. And, and this is very much in line with, you, know, if, you must have read uh, Fulham's Coherence, and, you know, they, and what he's saying most of the time is that, you know, the better action is really at the level of the regional offices instead of the higher level and so forth. So this is super parabéns for, for, for taking this. <laughs> my, my, question, my question to you is really on the, on the, on the line of whether uh, the, the states of Sao Paulo and uh, Ceará and Minas Gerais, do they have, do the regional offices have the same autonomy? in terms of uh, being able to fire principals, in terms of having their own budget? I mean, what are the discrepancies among them? Are, are we really comparing apples to apples when we compare them? Or are we, we're, we're not, you know, they, they're not under the same uh, legal framework? And I'm sorry to have to jump in, like I have to jump out like in five minutes, but I'll, I'll take, I'll, I'll follow with you later on. I'll be quick too. So. And that's a good. That's that's a great question, and I don't have an answer for that yet. Because the, the 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 portion of, of comparison, it's being added now. Okay, so between states, uh, so we are we are trying to understand. That I'll probably have to do like a lot of reading into okay. uh, the very fun documents there are how how these like what these things can do and cannot do uh, across states, and, but I haven't done that yet. Okay, but that, that's a great point, and and. And that's one of the big problems with the comparison here. So how to deal with the difference? See, Marcelo is here. Thank you. Yeah, Marcelo is here. Is he? He earlier he couldn't log on. He he told me he, they need a same person ID. No, I think he he be saying something. So I see. No, okay. I'm, I'm you are okay. okay. Uh, he doesn't realize yeah. he's not here. Oh. So <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um. Cool. Um, all right, so, 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 yeah, so in the case of Serra, right, um, we, we couldn't find the differences and, and, and the, the, that was a problem. Like they were, they were thinking about, so the, all the questions triggered high school, the schools that we are actually working with. Um, and then we'll have to figure out what to do with that. Pernambuco, so Pernambuco, oh yeah. Just ask a question about Did you have the, the graph of value added for Ceará. Oh, no, no, because no. Because that would be interesting to see us because they have so many municipal schools. If the effect is closer, like state and municipality, it's also- But we don't have enough state schools. So the, the, the problem is that I can't do that comparison for Ceará because of, I have only 1.6% of enrollment in, 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 this, in state schools. You know, so so the the value added for this for the state schools are going to be very weird. Right? Okay, like it's like it's going to be like only for a few schools. You know? There'll be like three schools. Yeah, three schools I, maybe. I, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's not going to be. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, but at the same time, those were the results used for the analysis. So, so that's the problem. So and and, and, and so what happened? What, what, no, we we used we used the municipal schools here. So we kind of bet on the, the cooperation between state and municipalities for Seattle. And we, we, we bet big. <laughs> and I think it's, it, it was, that, that's the problem with, with what triggered in their mind, you know? Uh, and as we didn't want to lead them in any way, we let them do that. Uh, Ana Paula was conducting the interview. She sometimes she tried to get more, but, but it was uh, find the balance, find, finding the balance there between actually trying to get the answers that we needed and like leading them to answer what we needed 
was hard. Um, so so yes, Sarai is a big it's, it's a problem here. Uh, Lucas, I think would would kill me for saying that, but because he thinks it's okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think there's a big problem there. We need to rethink about that. And I can't. I, I wish I could, but I can't do that. All right, Benabuku. Benabuku is the same idea as Sarah in terms of uh, 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 the scoring. Um, <laughs> um, they don't look any different. Um, so in here, the problem here that we picked up so far is that there is not enough variation. There is no variation at all in all 16 regional offices in terms of scoring. So that's why I want to jump in and, and, and see what's going on in the, with, with the scoring there. Uh, maybe the, the scoring team there was a little bit more accommodating or, or just uh, than, than we were. Um, and then, because two things that are happening here, they are scoring a lot higher. They're all around four. Right? And they are very much the same between both, both groups. Yeah, I'm probably yeah. yeah, just typing too and when carving are like more common than no performers. Yeah, right. Yeah. I don't know if it could be an answer, but it, uh, because I don't know how should, how this works in Minas and São Paulo, but in Pernambuco, the central office is really close to the regionals. And they all have the same design, you know, like you have to have this role model and then this one, and they are all being critically monitored and like, uh, let's say, uh, advi not advised, but like, I know exactly what the person is doing in the original office, so if I'm in the central office. Mm -hmm. So- More standardized. Yeah, it's more standardized. I think it is more than the others. Uh, so I, I, I agree with like, for sure. So for another project, I interviewed uh, Fred for, for yeah. a long time, and, and he was uh, explaining all about the the change that like he implemented when he got in, he, it, and it was exactly around what was being done within like regional offices and schools in terms of practices. So this might be reflecting that program. Yeah. So it's very standardized. But like, what I think would be interesting to understand and, and Again, next steps, and I have I don't have anything about that yet. It's like, do we have a limit in terms of of uh, score? So, do we have a ceiling effect here? So, if you are, um, maybe maybe as soon as you get around four, you don't have a lot of uh, gains coming from you know. After that, you don't have a lot of gains, but like. But but if you're lower, you you have you're not you're not helping enough. So maybe what's going on with these these two groups here is just simply well, we are they are already doing what they can do, and that's the limit of the structure. You know mm -hmm. who knows? So like th these are kind of things that we I want to we want to get at uh, on the comparison bit of, of of this, trying to understand whether there's a limit there whether the cooperation uh, influences anything, whether there are programs within the state office that actually standardize and like big things run in a different way. There's a lot to be done in, in, in uh, for the comparison bit. And that's what I had. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So for me to Michelle, yep. has a question. No, not, not him. Can you skip him? <laughs> <laughs> he knows everybody. Here. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, hello, everyone. I just need to say one thing before. I have two questions for Filippi. It's just that, I mean, are we to see all of you together? David Blank, my former advisor, a mentor, a friend. Filippi Heck, despite all things that he has done, he's still my friend. <laughs> we suffered together a lot at the State Department of Education in Minas Gerais, and suffering is something that bonds people. So we have a lot to, to do and work together yet. Unfortunately, he cheers for a crusade, but as I said, he's not a perfect man. You all know that. But it was a very nice presentation. 
just sending also a warm hello to Lara, to Julia Tami, to Gabriela, Francisco, Sara, all friends that I have been able to work together before. And uh, it's just marvelous to see all of you together at the Lemon Center at the same time. Just one quick story. When I ar arrived at Stanford, Joyce Toyota said to me that there was no office for the Lemon Center, that it was a place in our hearts. And it still is, <laughs> but it's also really nice to see that you are making a good use of this space as we use it in the inauguration and in the year I was there. So just marvelous to see you all together. Wonderful cohort. So two questions. First of all, when you mentioned about the value added and that you have three points in time, I was wondering, you mentioned something about that, but could you explain a little bit if you see differences between the first time, the second one, and the third time? Because I am willing to know if there is a lot of difference in time, through time, that we could relate, for example, of the style of the leadership, of the policies that were in place, or if we have consistency through time and the best performers are always the best performers. And the second question is that I am at the original office of the state of Minas Gerais in Ouro Preto. So I'm usually talking with researchers as yourself or doing some research, but more often I am the manager working on the field, not with the field, but on the field. So the question that we always make, for example, at D3E, Antonio Brezolin is present here, and D3E is always trying to bridge the gap between science and what we do on the state. So my question is, what are the recommendations? What should I and my, uh, my, my supervisor here and we that are on the field do in order to be aware that we are leading with the principal issues that we should be leading with and that we are aware of things that we cannot and should not um, miss on the amazing lot of stuff that we have to do, all the projects and pressure that we receive, what are maybe the three or four recommendations on what to be aware in order to achieve a better result and move forward to a place like Pernambuco or Ceará, which have better results on that. Right. Thanks, Michelle. And, and Michelle is uh, uh, running for for uh, vereador in Brazil, okay? Now, actually, <laughs> 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 um, okay. So, for, uh, about the, the the time points, Michelle, the way the, the way I'm doing that now, I don't do that separately. I can for the city of São Paulo, okay? Uh, I can't do it for for the other states because they don't. So the time points that we have. So for São Paulo, I have fifth, seventh, and ninth grades being tested. Uh, the, all the other states, they do fifth and ninth, okay? So that's looking at elementary. Then what we could do is do, is look at uh, between ninth and high school. Then, then, then we could do that, okay? Um, then we will be able to have like the, what, what is happening within the elementary and what is happening within the, 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 the high school level. Um, but but only Sao Paulo, I could break it up, but I don't I don't have that broken up uh, yet. Yeah, the, the whole analysis is one thing. Uh, about about recommendations, I think well, so far uh, what is the results are showing us is that you need to be proactive. You need to under, you need to understand what's going on within the schools that uh, that are under the jurisdiction with of your own regional office very closely. So if you have if you have a way of uh, uh, actually monitoring what's going on within the schools and trying to understand which schools you need to support the most and more often and maybe for longer, uh, that's that's giving you uh, uh, that, that that might be able to give you some advantage and like, and make them like recover faster or progress faster. Um, that's what's showing up from 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 what I've done so far. Any other questions before we, because we're right at closing time right now. One last one, please. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to understand how big is the impact of uh, manager practices? I don't know if I missed in one of the graphs because the, the x-axis was hidden, 
but how big is it? How what are it's you? It's not using? huge. It's not huge. It's okay. um, we have the the other characteristics of the students of the schools. Uh, they they add a lot more. It, it's not huge. It's it's something. It's there, um, but it's not huge. I don't have a number in my in my head. I can I can pick that up and, and tell you, but it's not it's not huge. In any any state. In any state. Felipe, thank you so much. We really appreciate your time, your energy, and everything today. Also, uh, all of those, especially those who joined online, we're very grateful that you took some time. We're grateful to have you here, and then look forward to seeing you at the uh, Ryle event this next week. So thank you, everybody, and we will see you next week.